Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Elmina is my name and I'm excited to welcome all of you this morning to a wonderful time of study, the Word of God. I have co-hosting the broadcast with me this morning, my wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Hello everyone out there, welcome to today's broadcast. Amen, amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you this morning, we bless and praise the name of Jesus. We appreciate your word and we appreciate what grace has done for us. All the provisions of redemption made available to us. And today as we look into the perfect law of liberty, the eyes of each one's understanding is flooded with light. Our viewers are strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Christ dwells in your hearts by faith. And we decree that by the end of the broadcast, everyone watching the broadcast will be the better for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, this is the first time I'm uh, coming here after the 30 days of glory. And some of you out there that were here in our seats and uh, were even clowning, making yeah. jokes. It was nice having you here. I hope that next year, those of you who were not able to make it, you endeavor to be here to see what it's like. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that are lost, some of our viewers around the world visited physically and we're able to come to the studio right here where we do the productions for Christocentric meal. Yes. All right? Let's get in the word. All right. Today we're looking at being filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Spirit. Part two. All right? We started looking at this yesterday. There is continuity to being filled with the Spirit. You will observe that in our earlier study on being filled with the Spirit, God didn't fill them. God didn't fill them. They were filled. They were filled. Mm. God didn't feel them. They were filled. The original language points to the men initiating it. Paul taught this in clarity in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. Can you read for us? And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Observe, be filled, speaking. Be filled, speaking. So we all get filled by speaking. Supernatural utterances happen when we speak. This implies we take the initiative to speak. It doesn't just happen. We initiate it. All right? There are elements to note. And they are psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Take note of that. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Honey, read for us Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The word, word, let the word of Christ implies utterances. The word of Christ. Peter gave an admonition too when he spoke about this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The word oracles implies utterances. Let him speak the oracles, the utterances of God. Originally, the text says, let him speak the oracles of God. That's where it is in the original. The word as isn't found there. Let him speak as, no, it's let him speak the oracles of God. All right, in the previous verse 10, he said the ability God gives, the ability God gives. He used this several times in the book of Acts as a gift, the ability God gives. And he read for us Acts 2.38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift, the gift, all right? Acts chapter 10, verse 45. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts eleven seventeen. The gift of the Holy Ghost. So we've seen gift, gift twice, which is actually the ability God gives. Yes. Yeah. All right? For as much then as God gave them the gift, like as he did unto us who believed on Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? So the word gift in this instance as we read is actually utterances. 
The gift is the utterances, all right? The utterances was what he was referring to. Prophecy or prophesying ought to be regular practice in the life of a believer. A believer ought to prophesy regularly. And don't forget, you initiate it. You are field speaking. You are field speaking. We are to constantly initiate it via tongues mm. plus interpretation of tongues. We can desire it and have it in operation in our lives. Yes. You just desire it, speak in tongues and interpret the tongues. Speak in tongues and interpret the tongues. Speak in tongues and interpret the tongues. And when you do that, you are filled, you speak, you interpret, you are filled, you speak, you interpret, you are filled. So it becomes a continuous action. And every believer has access to this manifestation of the Spirit. I'm telling you, and like yeah. we said last time, you can practice on yourself. Yes. That's the way to start. Speak to yourself, prophesy to yourself, mm -hmm. hear the interpretation of your spirit, speak it out. And, uh, you know, as you practice, you become more confident, yep. bolder. And now when you have a word of uh, prophecy or tongue for somebody, you'll be able to confidently say it and interpret as well, or in public uh, gatherings as well. Very so important. you begin with yourself. That's how to practice. Very important. Mm. It is an act of our will to constantly be filled the spirit mm. is what you initiate constantly. You can do it many times a day. The spirit is not going to follow you. He's already living in you. So you initiate it constantly by speaking in tongues and interpreting. Speaking in tongues and interpreting. Speaking in tongues and interpreting. And in the process all the gifts of the spirit will begin to express themselves like word of knowledge, word of yeah, wisdom, yeah. discernment, healing. I mean all the gifts they're all inside you. They're resident in the believer. So as you begin, you just keep flowing. Kenneth Hagin said yes. that tongues are the gateway to the supernatural. So you begin to speak in tongues and all other gifts of the Spirit finds expression through you. Praise God. Mm -hmm. All right, honey, lead us in the confession today. I desire and I'm constantly being filled with the Spirit. I desire and I'm constantly being filled with the Spirit. My utterances are supernatural. My utterances are supernatural. It edifies others. And it edifies others. Please scratch that uh, my in your devotional. It's a typo. It edifies others. Others, yes. My yes. Others. My it others. edifies others. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the grace that we have, access that we have into the deep things of God. We pray for viewers around the world today as they yield themselves to the manifestation of the deposit of God on their inside. They have utterance. They have boldness. They have confidence, and by the Spirit of God, they are a blessing to their generation. So we pray that you are kept and equipped by the Holy Ghost. And we declare that as you grow in knowledge, you grow in utterance, you grow in boldness, and you grow in being a blessing to the gifts of the Spirit, to other believers and to other people. And we declare that in the name of Jesus, every one of you hearing the sound of our voice, you have clarity of thoughts, you have clarity of understanding, and we command a steering in your heart, a steering of God on your inside. And in the name of Jesus, we declare that as you begin to speak to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, you are continually filled, you are being filled by the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the blessing today. And we declare that you are kept by the power of God and that you are fulfilled and satisfied in Christ Jesus. Therefore, we declare that you experience manifestation of God's grace and glory through you today, even as you minister and reach out to touch other lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are so excited, friends. We want to encourage you to order for the Christocentric meal, either from our office physically, the announcer will tell you how to go about that, or you can order them from Amazon, Dr. Ebel Damina. The books are all there. You can order for what you want, including the Christocentric meal and other resources that this ministry has put together to equip and edify you and bring you to a place of maturity in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just before we go, honey, one last word for viewers out there. Mm -hmm. Confession says, my utterances are supernatural, so it edifies others. Yeah. That's why the things we say are not ordinary, yeah. because we are not ordinary. Yeah. We are spirit beings. So what we say to others ought to edify. Right. So if you're saying things to others that are not edifying, you need to watch yourself, because you're acting contrary to who you are. You're a supernatural being, so what you say should edify your listeners. That's right. That's right. Your word should be seasoned with grace, mm. with salt, so it can minister grace to others. Yes. And throughout today, you can make up your mind and for the rest of your life to always say things that edify, things that build up people, and not things that destroy people. Mm. Make up your mind. That's grace. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, we're excited today. And you must make sure you help us invite more people, bring more people onto the platform. So let's flood the earth with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. It's wonderful having all of you to fellowship with every day in the first moments of your day. And until we come again your way tomorrow, same platform. This is Rachel and Abel Damina say that and the, the kingdom, kingdom of God is in power. is expressed in another word called grace. God desires for man to be saved. So he not only desired, he went ahead to make the enablement available for mankind. First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 3 as we begin tonight. Read for me. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. What is good? Verse 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. He will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So God desires that all men be saved. The scripture tells us he's not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But he's long suffering. Not willing that any soul should perish. But that all should come to repentance. God didn't plan for any soul to perish. When we began to study, you know, uh, the foreknowledge of God, the predestination and the election, we saw that all of that is God's plan for all of mankind in Christ Jesus. The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 tells us, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. And we said that the counsel of his will is salvation. God did not plan any man for destruction. Nobody, nobody, including the atheists who says there is no God. God has them inclusive in his plan of salvation. God doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. We saw that in Ezekiel. God does not take pleasure in the death of the sinner. That's why he's long-suffering, not willing that any soul should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. That brings us to the will of God in salvation. The role of God and the role of man in salvation. The role of God and the role of man in salvation. Well, the truth is that God plays the A to Z role in salvation. God plays the A to Z role in salvation. He is sovereign. And we are studying the Bible to see that all of God's sovereignty is revealed in the light of Christ. So the role of God is salvation. The role of God's sovereignty is in salvation. Nobody dictates to God. God doesn't react. Nobody dictates to God. Nobody tells God what to do. And at the same time, God doesn't react. He doesn't get angry. God doesn't react. He doesn't get angry. Circumstances don't make God do something. No. No. That there are situations doesn't make God do something. Because if God will do something because there's a situation, it means he's reacting. It means he's reacting. It is not because you have a problem that God will do something. If God is doing something because you have a problem, then it means he is not God. That means that problem uh, took him by surprise. But God doesn't react. God doesn't get angry. Before the need arise, he had made provision. On Mount Moriah, on Mount Moriah, Abraham said, the Lord shall provide himself. The Lord shall provide himself. That means the provision of the Lord is himself. Hebananka. The Lord shall provide himself. That is why all of God's promises and all of God's blessings are in him. In him. Everything God will do is in Christ. He does not react. He is never late. He is not in a hurry. He's in charge. 
Nothing takes him by surprise. Nothing takes him by chance. That's why he is God. He's omniscient. He, he has foreknowledge. He sees ahead of time. And in his predestined plan, he has already taken care of the matter before the matter arrived. I'm teaching here. He doesn't react. So he does not do something because of a situation. Before that situation was ever conceived, he had already done it. Abraham said to the, to the young lad, the Lord shall provide, because the young lad said, Father, we see the wood, we see the, the, the fire, where is the lamb? He said, the Lord will provide himself. The Lord will provide himself. Because it was a type of, 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 the, of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. The Lord shall provide himself. And when they got to Mount Moriah, the Lord provided himself. Oh yes. Don't touch that boy. Take him off. Uh, what, what, what benefit will I get in killing Isaac? Isaac is just a type. Look there, there's a ram. Cut up by the thick of the horns. Take that, put on the altar. And, and the Bible says, we brethren, as Isaac was, we are. So Isaac was to die. We were to die. And the ram showed up, which was Jesus coming to take our place. That's why Jesus said, Abraham saw my days and he was glad. When did Abraham see the days of Jesus on Mount Moriah at the place of the substitutionary sacrifice? The Lord shall provide himself. Nothing takes God by chance. Your healing is not going to happen. Your healing already happened. You are only coming to find out about it. Jesus is not going to die again to heal. That one death took care of the woes of humanity. That one death took care of all of, all of the problems that a man will ever face. That one death. Your salvation was provided in that death. Your health was taken care of in that death. Remember, sin entered into the world and death by sin. So when the root of death has been dealt with, then the branches that came with death will either sickness, disease, and all of human depravity are branches of sin. Until sin came into the world, there was no death in the world. We see what God created. God's creation of this planet in chapter, Genesis chapter 1. Uh, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. And God saw everything that he has created and that it was very good. Sickness is not very good. Disease is not very good. Poverty is not very good. Ahead of time, God already provided himself. God is not going to bless you. He hath blessed you. So there's nothing God is going to do anymore. He has already done all in Christ. Jesus is the fulfillment of all things. In Luke chapter 24 verse 25, he looked at those disciples of his on the way to Emmaus and he said to them, Oh fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. What has the prophet spoken? Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Talking about the prophets of the Old Testament. This was the message of the prophets of the Old Testament. That the Christ will suffer and out of his suffering, glory will follow. Alright? And then beginning from Moses... And all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. I am the fulfillment of all things. All the promises of God, all the blessings of God, all the goodness of God, all the favor of God, all the mercy of God, all the grace of God, packaged in a man called Jesus. The fulfillment of all of God's promises. So all the promises of God are in him. In him. When you have him, you have all of God's promises fulfilled. When you have him, Jesus, you have all of God's promises fulfilled. Paul, Paul, Paul 
Paul speaking to the church at Corinth. He says, Silvanus and I, we didn't tell you that God's promises are yea and nay. They are not yea and nay. There's nothing like sometimes when you pray, God says yes. And some other times, God says no. And some other times, God says wait. There's no such thing in the scriptures. All the promises of God are in him. Yes. There's no no. In Christ, there's no no. Yes means fulfilled. That's the meaning of yes. All the promises of God in him are fulfilled. Glory to God. Oh, not some of them. All the promises of God in him. Yes. Amen. Fulfilled. Jesus is the amen of God. Everything God said, Jesus says amen to it. Fulfilled. Jesus is the fulfillment of everything. All of it fulfilled in Christ. Everything. All of God's plan for mankind fulfilled where? In Christ. And where is Christ? In you. Christ in you. God is not going to. God has. You didn't hear that. God is not going to. God has. Didn't brother Peter give us an insight into that? He had given unto us, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you escape the corruption that is in the world through loss. And he hath given unto us, he hath, he hath given unto us all things that pertain, all things. He hath, he hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge through the knowledge God is not going to God has already done but you take you take delivery of what has been done through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue we are not called to shame we are not called to disgrace we are called to glory and virtue Christ in you, the hope of glory. No shame. Lift your right hand and shout, all things are mine. Say it louder, all things are mine. Loudest, all things are mine. Say, I'm not the needy. I'm the supplied for. You know, Brother Hagin, Brother Hagin, told the story of how God healed him. He got healed from that sick bed. Walked out of that sick bed. And the devil came back to him with symptoms of that paralysis. That is what people say you need deliverance. No. No. He said when the devil came back to him with the symptoms of the paralysis, he was in the toilet. I heard him tell this. And the devil whispered to his ears, the sickness is back. And this time around, you will not be healed. So he started laughing. Ha, 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 he laughed until the devil said, Why are you laughing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> your landlord said, If you don't pay your rent, I'll throw you out. <laughs> he will get afraid because normal people don't behave like that. <laughs> it's time for the church to laugh. It's time for God's people to laugh. These are the days of laughter. <laughs> Look at the problem and start laughing. Look at the challenge and start laughing. Look at the situation and begin to laugh. You know why you're laughing? You know better. <laughs> oh, <laughs> glory. 
Glory! Glory! Hello. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs, and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer.